Bitcoin is blowing up and I first paid attention to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency back in 2017, 2018 and I had a good feeling it was going to hit $100,000 US at some point and it just did. So if you're still in the dark about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, then you got to pay attention because I'm going to explain exactly what those things are. So to understand Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, you have to understand three different layers. The first layer is cryptocurrency and Bitcoin itself, then the underlying technology called blockchain technology. And then to understand blockchain, you got to understand open source software development. There's a stack here. I'm going to explain each level so you have a good understanding of exactly what this technology really is. Once you get it and it clicks for you, you will understand why it continues to grow and get bigger and bigger every year and that it's not going to go away anytime soon. It's only going to become more and more part of normal daily life. Okay, let's start with open source software. What is open source software? So imagine a can of food. You know when you look on the back, you see the ingredients list. That tells you exactly what's in this food. When we use software like computers, technology, phones, laptops, there's underlying code that runs the actual software. This is known as source code. Originally, we had machine code, which was a type of code that humans could not interpret. So writing software for computers back in the day was extremely complex. Machine code is basically a bunch of numbers and digits that's meaningless to a human. So then we came up with programming languages, which looks like a combination of language and math. There's many languages like JavaScript, Python, C++. There's so many programming languages. You'll see words as well as mathematical equations. So it's a combination of language and math. This makes the underlying code of software something that humans can understand, they can share, and it makes writing software a whole lot easier. You then put that into a compiler which converts that source code into machine code for computers to interpret. So open source software is software where the underlying code is shared publicly. So just like how a can of food has the ingredients list on the back, so you can actually see what's in that food. Open source software is the same thing. It's a piece of software where the underlying code is publicly disclosed. What this does is it gives people four fundamental freedoms. This was determined by an organization called the Free Software Foundation. The first one is to run the program as you wish. You can do whatever you want with this program. Of course, you don't want to break the law, but you can run the program as you wish. You can see and study the underlying source code see the ingredients and actually understand what's happening in the background. You can redistribute copies of this software and you can modify and redistribute your own modified copies of the software. So then what is the blockchain? The blockchain is essentially a technology built on open source software. So this way it can be publicly understood people can make copies and make separate blockchains. What is a blockchain? Well, the blockchain is essentially, think about a network of computers, which is exactly what it is. And all these computers are controlled by different organizations, different people. It's not all controlled by one company or government. All these computers are connected to each other. And there's something known as a ledger. You know, back in the day when banks first started, we had no computers. You would go to the bank, they'd have a ledger that would say, this is your name, this is your account. You have, let's say, $10 in it. If you came in, you withdrew $2. There would be someone who would mark that you came in, you took out $2. Now you have $8 in your account. That's a ledger. It's basically a record of all the transactions that has happened. So what blockchain technology is, is it's a ledger that's confirmed across many different computers. And those computers are not all controlled by one government or one entity. These are known as mining systems. I've actually mined cryptocurrency. And the nice thing is anyone can get into mining and your computer will confirm transactions and you'll get a small commission from each one of those transactions. So the blockchain is essentially a network of computers that are all sharing a public ledger. And anytime a transaction is done, that ledger gets confirmed across multiple different computers. When enough computers have confirmed that they are all in agreement, the money is transferred from one account to another. This is how blockchain technology works. It's a network of computers not controlled by one government or one agency. Anyone can mine cryptocurrency. Anyone can have a computer connected to the blockchain verifying transactions. And so what cryptocurrency is, is it's a currency built on top of blockchain technology. The nice thing is that now you don't have a centralized controller of this network. That's why cryptocurrency is called DeFi, decentralized finance. It's a currency not controlled by one government or one agency or one bank. So the original cryptocurrency and blockchain 
was Bitcoin. Now the story goes, there was a guy named Satoshi Nakamoto, which is a Japanese software engineer. He was in some sort of a group somewhere. No one knows who this guy is. No one even knows if he's real. Maybe this is just an alias that was used online. He had the idea of creating this software called blockchain technology to create a financial system that's not controlled by a government, a true human worldwide currency that can spread and it can grow and people can invest into it. And it's got a set of rules and those rules are built into that blockchain. The rules cannot be changed. If you take the underlying source code and you change the rules, you're creating a new chain. That's why we have many cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and Litecoin. They're all based on that open source software that Bitcoin was based on, but they've taken a different set of rules and created a new chain. So the original chain, which is the Bitcoin network, the Bitcoin blockchain, has a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins. All these computers are confirming that worldwide. So that will never change. If you wanna have more, then you'd go to a new chain and create a new crypto there's probably thousands of cryptocurrencies at this point. You got your main heavy hitters like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, because Bitcoin has only 21 million Bitcoins, that means it's protected against inflation. Governments can just print money and basically add more money into the pool, which makes every dollar worth less. But this cannot happen with Bitcoin because there's only 21 million Bitcoin and that was in the original chain. And so it's set. There's no changing that. That's going to be there forever. There are other coins that do have the rules where they can add more coins into the network. Those can obviously be inflated. Bitcoin doesn't work like that. And why is it called cryptocurrency? Crypto stands for cryptography. Cryptography is essentially encrypting and decrypting information. That basically means that you are coding information so that it cannot be read by anyone until there's a person or an entity that has the decryption key. This came from medieval times when kings would send messages back and forth to each other. If that message got in the hands of someone that they didn't want to see that message, it would be encoded. The letters would be scrambled and only the king that was supposed to receive the message would know how to descramble that message and therefore actually get the message and understand it. That is the most basic fundamental form of cryptography. So cryptocurrencies use cryptography to store and transmit data securely. You have a wallet, your wallet is connected with the blockchain. The blockchain knows that you are the owner of that wallet. You have a certain amount of currency. If you send that currency to another wallet, the blockchain will have to confirm that across many different computers. Once enough computers agree, then the money gets moved. You can't say that cryptocurrency is 100% secure because nothing really is. But if someone wanted to hack a cryptocurrency network, they would literally have to identify and hack every single computer in the world at once to somehow get access to everyone's ledger and make some sort of a change that the entire network wouldn't see. It's like a 99.999% chance that that's impossible because if someone could do that, they'd be able to hack planes, banks, governments. They would be able to do so much more than just hacking a crypto network. That would be the smallest thing on their mind. They'd be looking after way more. They'd literally have to hack all these computers at once. And there's no way to really see where they all are. So cryptocurrency becomes massively more secure in that way because it's a decentralized network where you can't possibly identify where all these mining computers are. Whereas there's a higher chance of a bank being hacked as long as you identify where their servers are and where the bank is hosting their data, it would actually be a lot easier to hack that than a cryptocurrency network. Now, people's personal wallets can get hacked. You know, people can have a password hijacking or they can take control of your phone and hack your wallet. But to hack the entire network itself is virtually impossible. That's why crypto has lasted the test of time. It's only getting bigger and bigger. So to recap, you have open source software, software that is free and open for anyone to see. Satoshi Nakamoto made the Bitcoin network. He created the blockchain technology, which is a network of computers that can all verify these transactions. There's a certain set of rules on the Bitcoin network, which is 21 million Bitcoins. There's also another thing called the block size, which is how big that ledger can be. And it's only one megabyte, which puts a huge limitation on Bitcoin, meaning that the network is going to be pretty slow. It could never compete with networks like Visa, or some of these other big financial institutions. That's why the fact that it's built on open source software is so valuable because now we have all these other different coins. Like Litecoin, for example, 
is supposed to be like Bitcoin, but with a much bigger block size. So it can actually have fast transactions and have tons of transactions at the same time. There's many cryptos that have gone in many different directions. And these currencies built on top of blockchain can be extremely powerful, extremely valuable. So what are my predictions going forward? Because in 2017, 2018, I, once I understood this stuff, I realized this was the evolution of technology. It's only gonna get bigger and bigger. I mined a bunch of cryptocurrency, I invested some, I 10x my money and now I've had a huge return which helped me out a lot in my life. At the time, a ton of people argued with me, denied me and said I was wrong and this is all a scam, it's all nonsense. So what are my predictions now? Well, I think Bitcoin is gonna be like gold in the way that it's a long-term storage of value. I don't think Bitcoin is gonna become a currency we used to actually transact back and forth. If I go buy a pack of gum, I'm not gonna buy it with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like gold. You buy a big amount of it, you let it sit, you invest in it. When you're ready to pull out, you pull some money out of it. The other big coin, which is the second biggest coin, is Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has a lot of tools and applications built on top of it. You can look up NFTs, non-fungible tokens. That's a topic for an entirely other video. But NFTs are built on the Ethereum network. There's also things called smart contracts what that means is basically there's two parties that are connected to the ethereum network one party hires another party to perform a task once that task is complete then the money is transferred so the money goes into a limbo you can basically pay money for a task when it's actually complete the receiver will then receive the money if the task is not complete the money comes back to the original sender this is a very basic explanation of smart contracts and that's built on the Ethereum network. So I think Ethereum is gonna have tools, applications, smart contracts on the Ethereum network, which is very interesting. Lastly, for small day-to-day -day transactions, I think we're gonna use a currency called Monero because Monero is truly private. See, the way Bitcoin works is that you can actually see all the wallets in the world. You can go look on the blockchain, see every single Bitcoin wallet. You don't know who they belong to, but you can see that they exist, how much money is in them, and how much money has transacted back and forth. That ledger from day one is all there. You can look it online, the entire ledger of the Bitcoin network is there from day one. Monero is truly private. You cannot see the full ledger. It also solves the scalability problem in the way that Bitcoin has that block size that makes the file transfer slower. It can only transfer so much data at the same time monero solves that it's much more scalable and the transaction fees are very minimal so i think what's going to happen is bitcoin is a long-term storage of value ethereum will have those smart contracts large purchases like a car house maybe those things will go through the ethereum network and then your small day-to-day -day transactions like buying a pack of gum buying a cup of coffee is going to be with monero that's my prediction right now it's hard to say when all of this is going to happen but slowly but surely year after year we're seeing the cryptocurrency networks getting bigger and more popular bitcoin is in a hundred thousand dollars us by the time you're watching this video it could be massively more than that it could be massively less than that in the upcoming short-term future i think we're going to see a massive crash we're in a bubble again right now. Bitcoin is going to drop down to maybe half of its value. The people who have been burned before are going to buy Bitcoin now. And so that way it can ride the wave and then cash out some when it goes higher up again. If you haven't invested in Bitcoin right now, we're in November of 2024. I don't think it's a good time to invest right now. Unless you're looking to make small investments and maybe just play with the network, $100, $200. I wouldn't dump a lot of money into it now because we're at the peak of the market. It's probably gonna come crashing down real soon and you're gonna be all depressed. Oh, I lost my money. This guy on YouTube was making a bunch of nonsense scam. This is a long-term thing. It goes up, it goes down. If you zoom out of the graph from day one, it's gone up thousands of times from when it first came out. You may also not want to invest in cryptocurrency itself. You may want to invest in actually mining crypto. When I first got into it, I bought some Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. I also bought a bunch of computers and mined crypto. So now I own computers on the blockchain network, confirming transactions and taking small commissions back. In maybe three to six months, I was able to pay myself back for my initial investment in the hardware. Then once I was done with the hardware and it wasn't powerful enough, I sold it off for a profit. I kept some Bitcoin in my Bitcoin wallet, in my Coinbase wallet, and it's gone up, you know, 10 times since then. I should have never, you know, sold off any of my coins to pay myself back. I should have just invested all of it and left it there. But anyways, I can't go back now. I'm so happy with the results. So right now I wouldn't invest in Bitcoin if you're new to it. I don't think it's a good time. We're at the high of a market. Wait till no one's talking about it. There's no news about it. That's the time to buy it. When it's all over YouTube and news sites and everyone's talking about Bitcoin and crypto, 
it's too late. We're in one of the peak markets. It's still early days, just like there was the early days of the internet and early days of computers. Look at how far those things have come now. Even when websites were blowing up and it was the dot-com bubble of the 90s, no one ever thought they'd put a credit card into a website and shop online. Most of the websites were scams. Now we're buying stuff online all the time. So it's still quite the early days of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology where it's just gonna become more and more normalized and you'll wanna understand it as quickly as you possibly can. Okay, thanks so much, see you next time.